Hey guys and welcome to Field Notes. You will notice today we are not in front of my computer in my office. We are actually in Starved Rock State Park. So this is a park in northern Illinois along the south bank of the Illinois River. Now you may be looking at some of this footage and saying that doesn't really look like Illinois. And no, it doesn't really look like typical flat Illinois, does it? And this is all because of water. There was a massive flood that happened about 15,000 years ago known as the Kankakee Torrent. This flood was caused by a breach of a glacial lake that formed as the Wisconsin Glacier melted. The Kankakee and Illinois River still largely follow the path that was caused by this flood. So while water is a very powerful force of nature and should not be underestimated, the rock that this area is made out of helped give it all of these canyons and waterfalls. And that rock is a St. Peter's Sandstone. Now this is a very famous rock. St. Peter's Sandstone is a very well-rounded, well-sorted sandstone with a very very high silica content. All this basically means is that all the grains are about the same size, they're very round, and they're almost pure quartz. This sandstone is not usually seen on the surface here, but it is exposed because of an anticline that runs through northern Illinois known as the LaSalle anticline. And now an anticline is basically just a frown-shaped fold. Anticlines tend to expose older rock because the bottom layers are being lifted up and the top layers are eroded away, exposing the older strata. So like I said, the St. Peter sandstone is pretty famous, and that is because of how well sorted it is. Historically, St. Peter sandstone has been used to manufacture glass, but now it's used for all sorts of things, including the abrasive use in construction, and probably most famously in oil and gas extraction. It's actually pumped into the cracks where we'll find natural gas and oil and used to keep those crevices open. Open. So Starved Rock got its name like a lot of things in this country from the native people that used to live here. And this time it's actually from a legend. There's a lot of versions of this legend in particular, so this is a pretty generic recap. In the 1760s, Chief Pontiac of the Ottawa was attending a tribe council meeting. So at the same meeting, another chief of another tribe stabbed Pontiac, which started a war. Pontiac was pretty well liked. He was pretty known for being a very intertribal leader. So members of his tribe and other tribes attacked the Illinois. At this point, it was pretty much fight and die or run. They decided to run and they ran up onto a huge rock bluff. So while this did create a safer area for them to be, it also limited their access to food and water. And they basically stayed up on top of this rock surrounded by their enemies. It was either get off of it and fight or stay up there and starve to death. And so starved to death they did. Isn't that a pleasant story? There's many stories relating to Native Americans in this country are very pleasant. This legend is oftentimes cited as to why we don't have any more surviving Illinois people, apparently ignoring the fact that we do still have living Peoria and Kankakee people. So take that story with a grain of salt. Starved Rock Park is a National Historic Landmark, and actually Starved Rock's cabins are on the National Registry of Historic Places. Isn't that weird? I think that's super weird. So the cabins on a park. Historic places. <laughs> so thanks guys for coming along with us and learning a little bit more about this park. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you guys have not already, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!